Hello, everybody. This is Ryan from I Try Running Programs. And today we have a supplement discussion on one of my favorite supplements, which is Yohimbe. And it's really, it's truly, it's derivative Yohimbine hydrochloride or Yohimbine HCL, as you'll commonly find it on supplement websites. So why would I be talking about this from a running context? Well, I want to be clear in a few different ways here. Firstly, uh, just to get kind of the legal issues out of the way, I am not a medical doctor. I do have a doctorate in an unrelated field, uh, which leads me to like to do deep dive research, kind of looks at different supplements using uh, kind of the university access that I have. Uh, but another thing that I think is really important is that this is a supplement that is really, as much as there's good data behind it for certain things and against it in other ways, it is really probably one of the supplements that I can truly say is an N of one. You really have to do an individual case study to see how this works for you. And so I will talk about why some people use it, why I use it. Uh, I don't think it's truly a direct running support supplement. I do not think it will improve your performance. In fact, in many cases, it will negatively impact you from a direct performance standpoint if that was why you were taking it. But if you're taking it for the reasons that I take it, it may indirectly improve your performance, thereby being worth taking. Okay. So since I've gotten kind of all the legalese out of the way, what is Yohimbine? Well, essentially, Yohimbe or Yohimbine is a derivative um, a tree bark that is simply uh, essentially an herbal supplement that they create from the tree bark uh, located from trees in Africa. So uh, scientists kind of take the, the bark in, they can derive Yohimbe from it. And then most supplement companies will then turn it into a, another derivative, which is Yohimbine hydrochloride, which is generally speaking, uh, just tolerated much better by most humans. And it takes out a lot of the negative side effects that you get from straight Yohimbe supplementation. Now, why would you take it for a variety of reasons? Some men will take it as an aphrodisiac or for performance issues, male performance issues. Um, for me personally, I take it far more as a weight loss and appetite control supplement. Now, there's a lot of good data around how much your weight impacts your money. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what is best for you. Uh, as a man who's 6'2", 188 pounds, uh, I can stand to probably lose about 8 to 10 pounds and feel like I'm at the right body fat percentage for me to best perform. Um, many would argue I should go even lower, but you know I weight lift and I do different things. So my body fat percentage is probably different for somebody at that weight comparative to others. Okay. So those are the reasons I take it. Really something to keep in mind here when we think about Yohimbine and Yohimbe is that I will show you some studies, but there is not a lot of great perfect correlation between Yohimbe or Yohimbine and its uh, direct impact on athletic performance. It is a stimulant in nature. It is generally taken with caffeine. Uh, something that I would like to talk about is, is really is, uh, dosing requirements is not really the right word, but the ways that you could dose it. Most folks will dose it for fat loss using it in conjunction with caffeine. You take 200 milligrams or so of caffeine and then 0.2 milligrams of Yohimbine per kilogram of body weight. So if you're based in the States like I am, take your weight in pounds, turn it into kilograms using a converter, and then go ahead and times that number by 0.2. And that would give you the most efficacious dose. Now, personally, for me, the way that I ramp it up, I will start with just caffeine for a week because I do not use caffeine year round. So I will take 200 milligrams of caffeine for a week. Then I will start with 2.5 milligrams and slowly build up to my efficacious dose. Uh, over the course of each week, I will stick it, you know, kind of 200 milligrams of caffeine plus X amount of Yohimbine then bump it up another pill then bump it up another pill. My efficacious dose is 15 milligrams. So for most supplement companies, that would be roughly six tablets of Yohimbine HCL. But we really don't know what we're getting in some of these supplements. And that's something that I will talk about a little bit further. So uh, in terms of some of the data behind this, why would we even consider Yohimbine? Well, there's a few reasons. One of the areas that I think is really interesting, uh, a study that came out of Japan is they looked at various ways that supplements could impact uh, norepinephrine and other forms of brain chemistry for athletic performance in rats. So to be clear, it's a rat study. You have to be a little bit careful with that. But the authors do notate in some of the discussion areas about things that impact humans. And Yohimbine has a 
ability to increase norepinephrine levels in your brain. And norepinephrine is associated with motivation. It is associated, especially from an exercise perspective, in uh, increasing the desire to voluntarily exercise, i.e. want to go train. So one of the positives of Yohimbine is that you could potentially find it to be uh, a way to increase your motivation. Personally, it, for me, I can say that Yohimbine does excite me. It gets me excited in the morning to go run. Uh, that's why I take it. Now, most people, when they take Yohimbine, though, are going to avoid heavier, uh, more like hit style or more high intensity, like a track workout type of steady state cardio. Instead, most will take it in low intensity or medium intensity steady state cardio sessions, usually in the neighborhood of 30 minutes to an hour. Why is that the case? Well, your hip has a relatively short half-life. So most people take it within 30 minutes, you will start to feel an effect. And then from there, you might exercise on it for roughly 30 minutes to an hour. Most folks will go for a walk. I personally don't mind using it on easy running days. In fact, I don't even mind using it before a track workout, and I don't mind using it before a long run. I'm, I luckily tolerate your mind very, very well. Most don't. So that's something to keep in mind. And what are those things that might impact you? Well, there's really a variety of ways. As we talked about before, the intended usage here shown in the study is a variety of reasons, right? People take it from everything from an aphrodisiac to a weight loss supplement. The, the reality is that the effects for most people can end up being quite negative. And this is more so from pure Yohimbine or pure Yohimbe versus Yohimbine HCL, which is tolerated better. But some folks can't even tolerate Yohimbine HCL very well. So that should also be stated. So some of the negative effects include everything from nausea to anxiety, uh, to an increase in blood pressure, an increase in um, heart rate, uh, twitching, in some cases, even seizures or heart attacks. So it can be pretty negative. Now, most of the times, the more severe side effects end up coming in a uh, case of overdosage. Uh, once again, if we use a simple 0.2 milligram per kilogram of body weight way of dosage and you ramp up slowly so that the stimulant effect is not too aggressive the first time you take it, you should be okay in a low intensity or medium intensity state. But once again, this is an end case of one. You have to know what's going to work or not work for you. This is not as simple as, you know, plug in your body weight and plug in a efficacious dose of Yohimbine. This is a lot of trial and error. And so for me personally, when I find that a Yohimbine supplement works, I have to start very slow and ramp it up. And then I can take it for probably in a two to three week window at its efficacious dose. So I ramp up for probably two to three weeks take it for two to three, maybe even sometimes four weeks at an efficacious dose, and then dose back down again for two to three weeks so that I'm not just coming off the stimulant too hard. Okay. So that's personally how I dose it. Everybody's a little bit different, but you will find that most bodybuilders, since this is a very popular bodybuilding supplement for those who are trying to get stage ready, they will end up taking it for probably in a window of 10 to 12 weeks and then take some time off it because it's pretty rough on your cardiovascular system to be taking stimulants all the time, especially if you're going to run with them, for God's sakes, you really have to, to limit your time using the Ohimbine. I usually only use it once or twice per year. Uh, and so some people call it a cycle, almost if it's, it's, as if it's more of like a um, steroidal type compound. And it is not a steroidal type compound. It is just a natural herbal supplement. But I do think there's a lot of benefit of uh, transitioning off of stimulants so that they can give you another stimulatory effect when you choose to start to use them again, okay? But that's just my opinion. Now, in terms of the pharmaceutical qualities of Yohimbine, this is really, really important. This is a great study. I'm not gonna go through all of uh, the data here, but essentially what they did was they took, I want to say roughly about 20 to 30 versions of the supplement commonly found on the internet. And you can see what type it was, whether it was Yohimbine HCL, whether it was Yohimbe extract uh, or Yohimbine itself, and what the capsule amount was and what the labeled quantity was. And that you'll find in this study is that there's either far more of the supplement in the pill than what they're saying, or it's far underdosed. And this is somewhat of the danger with Yohimbine supplementation, in my opinion, is you really just don't know what you're getting. And this is obviously a, a problem with the supplement in um, industry in general. So it's not like this is just a problem unique to Yohimbine. 
But with something like Yohimbine, where it can have really negative impacts, like we've talked about in the previous study, this is where you have to be really, really careful. Because if you don't know what you're getting, and then you overdose on it, you could be in a, a really a case where you could have very, very negative side effects uh, that are really difficult to deal with. Now, luckily, once again, Yohimbine has a relatively uh, short half-life. So if you are having negative symptoms, you can probably come off it pretty quickly. However, you know, if you, you go through the internet and you read horror stories of Yohimbine on forums, bodybuilding forums, Reddit, things of that nature, you'll find a lot of folks who, quite frankly, you know, dealt with it for hours on end, you know, 10 to 12 hours of very negative side effects or even going and taking themselves to the emergency room. So you really have to be careful here. And this is where you have to do your best to really for lack of a better term, when you're playing Russian roulette, picking out the supplement from Amazon or from a you know comparable service, you probably want to look at the reviews and see what people feel like. Uh, personally, there's there's a variety of um, companies that I think have a, a good product. Uh, these include Prima Force, uh, Jacked Factory. Uh, these companies, you know, they're, they're, I've used both of their products and have felt that the dosage did not exceed what I was expecting in terms of side effects to my system. Luckily, when I take Yohimbine, I generally just feel a rush. I feel a thermogenic effect around uh, fat stores in my lower abdominal area and in my obliques, uh, kind of the Adonis belt for men. Uh, and I will also feel a slight increase in uh, heart rate and a slight increase in breathing. The only time I've had a very negative side effect with Yohimai was I ramped up too quickly and it made me a little short of breath when walking, uh, though that was not a pronounced effect and it was just for a very short time frame. So you do have to be really careful here. You have to be careful because you, A, you don't know how this is going to impact your body and you don't know how it's going to impact you in terms of the total number of milligrams you're actually getting in a supplement. Uh, this is the one downside to the study is they don't need to kind of... Uh, name and shame, if you will. They don't let us know what company's product, you know, had what it was supposed to have or had too much of or had too little of. But you just really have to be careful with what you're buying. Okay. Now, in terms of its usage in a sporting context, I actually did not find a study that shows Yohimbine has a true impact uh, on running. Specifically, since this is a running focused channel, this is why I'm talking about it from a, a running perspective. If we look at similar stimulants, um, most of the time, what stimulants will do while you're running is they will increase your body's uh, impact. Essentially, you will feel a larger effect while running, but in many cases, you'll be able to not perceive that effect. Let's say you're using Adderall, for example, not that I've used Adderall, but if you read studies on Adderall when it comes to uh, cardio performance, folks who are then doing said cardio do not feel like they're working as hard, but objectively they're working harder from data points, whether it's their heart rate, whether it's their beats per minute, whether it's the amount of uh, oxygen that they need to intake, uh, the amount of sweat they're producing. This has been all shown in various, various stimulants to increase uh, the taxation on your cardiovascular system while not actually helping you to perform better. So that's why I, I said at the start of the video, if you're taking your hemline expecting to run a faster mile, you probably won't that day, but you might 12 weeks later when you've lowered your body fat percentage. And that's exactly what this study that came out of Serbia looked at. They took uh, two groups of professional level soccer players, uh, and they had 10 who took Yohimbine for a 21 day period and 10 who took it, uh, took a placebo, excuse me, in comparison. And what's really interesting in this study is the way that they dosed it to begin with. They had this, the folks take two dosages per day, both at 10 milligrams with caffeine. And the uh, placebo group had cellulose capsules. So they thought they were receiving something, but they weren't. So basically both groups didn't know what they were potentially taking. They signed off, you know, did all the, the health studies, all that good stuff. Now, the scientists doing this particular study uh, looked at it in terms of a variety of variable impacts from the Yohimbine, whether it was body mass to a shuttle run to their fat mass, whatever that might be. There was no increase or decrease in performance from those taking Yohimbine. The only statistically significant change was in fat loss between the two groups. 
And the fat mass loss you can see is much, much higher. In fact, they were the group that went down compared to the other group actually put on fat mass, the placebo group. And they went down uh, essentially 2% in their fat mass. That's crazy at that low of a body fat percentage because both groups were single digit body fat, which, you know, any, uh, you know, bodybuilder or anybody who's uh, worked on their physique before would tell you it's incredibly difficult in and of itself to get down to the single digits to then lose 2% uh, percent of your body fat, total body fat percentage to go down from nine to 7%. That's basically like a 25% loss in your overall body fat. It's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, so very much so a market impact on the fat mass percentage. So once again, if we think about this now from a running perspective, you know, there's a lot of data to, to kind of cement the idea that you will lose two seconds per mile for every pound of weight that you lose. Now, if you're keeping lean mass on your system, you're better able to maintain your current body weight. So let's say in my case, if I was to go from 188 pounds, which is my current weight down to my goal weight of 180, and that was all fat loss, then I would gain 16 seconds per mile and I would be better able to lower my calorie, my basal metabolic rate, or increase my basal metabolic rate because I'm still keeping my lean mass and able to perform better. So this is where your combine, especially in combination with caffeine, could have a really positive impact on runners. Because if you're able to maintain a lower body weight or to get down to a body weight that you've never been able to get to, uh, you very well likely will perform better once you cycle off the stimulant, especially if you're able to maintain that body fat percentage. Now, as you get lower and lower into body fat, that's going to get more and more difficult to do. The likelihood that you're going to be able to maintain a low body fat uh, for a very, very long period of time is probably pretty low in most athletes. But I think for runners, especially if you're somebody who's increasing your mileage over time, thereby increasing your caloric need over time, you're probably more apt to keep said body fat percentage off. The reality is if you're somebody who's going to push your mileage up as a runner, no matter what, you may never need Yohimban. You might lose weight a little bit slower, uh, but the reality is, is you're going to always inc increase your caloric need if you're increasing your mileage. And we all know calories in, calories out is as simple as it gets when it comes to weight loss. However, if you're somebody who is trying to uh, push you, yourself from a physique, physique perspective or to try to lose weight maybe a little bit faster or to give your body a little bit of support in losing weight, then your Himbine might be a supplement worth trying. But once again, you'd want to find a quality provider of said supplement to really know that you're getting what you're paying for and not putting yourself at risk for very adverse side effects. So I hope this conversation was useful because you know what? The last thing I would add here on this is when we're thinking about running performance, there's only so much we can do. There's things that are proven to help with performance, caffeine, nitric oxides, things of that nature. However, I think there should hopefully over time be more look into how different supplements can impact our performance. If you take your hymbine and you have a great response from a norepinephrine standpoint and it makes you more motivated to run, that's a huge victory. If it helps you lower body fat percentage and keep lean mass, that's a huge victory. But if you take your hymbine and you have horrible side effects or you would have lost the fat no matter what, then is that really worth putting yourself at risk for when taking a supplement? Arguably, it isn't. So this is the, the whole situation behind your Himbine. When I think about it from a running perspective, as somebody who views running as the sport that I compete in uh, and want to perform well in, then that's the reason I take it from a running perspective is to keep my body fat percentage down so that I can perform faster and I can perform better over more distances because if my, musculos my musculoskeletal system isn't hampered by a bunch of excess fat, I'm less likely to get injured. I'm more likely to perform better and I'm more likely to then also perform better over longer distance runs that I prefer to run. Okay. So that's the reason I talked about Yohimbine today. I hope this was useful. Uh, if you've taken Yohimbine, I'd love to hear your experiences. If you think this is the dumbest idea ever for runners, which very well likely may be, I'd certainly love to hear that feedback as well. So take care, everybody. Uh, and if you're interested, try out Yohimbine.